My name is Rod McMillian. I now call to order the April 9th, 2024 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education in Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at the discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Audit Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members will say their name before making it seconding a motion as applicable as, Ellis, as well as when requesting discussion on agenda item. As is courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call for you by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Lichter. Present. Ms. Frempong. Ms. Frempong. She called in. Maybe she's. Uh, she she just texted me. She cannot unmute. OK, thank you, Mr. Young. Uh, Mr. McMillian, uh, apologies for interrupting. Please have her try to unmute now. Ms. Frempong, if you can hear us, please try to unmute right now. I think maybe Mr. Emery, he said, Mr. Young said, remember number six to unmute. Yes, sir, star six. Star six. Okay, I'll call Mr. McMillian. Says it's not allowed to unmute when, when I press it, is what she's saying. Uh, Mr. Jim, do you have Ms. Frempong's number? Can you talk directly to her? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Ms. Jamison, let's go ahead with the meeting. Ms. Jamison, okay. I'm present. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll call the staff now. Ms. Barr? Yes, quorum being president of the committee members, we will begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of the staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you. Ms. Barr? Present. Ms. Stevens? Present. Ms. Mana? Present. Mr. Fletcher? Present. Mr. Strait? Present. Ms. Sample? Here. Ms. Crew? Present. Mr. Edwards? Ms. Smith? Present. Mr. Hartlove? Here. Mr. Corns? Present. Thank you. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you. Item number two, opening remarks. Good afternoon. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the reports presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get the answers to your questions. I received a number of different questions. I'm going to say probably six or eight maybe nine or 10 questions about the special education audit that we talked about last time. I presented that to Ms. Barr for her answers. She was going to give the ones that she could not answer or that were outside the scope of the audit. She was going to pass the appropriate questions on to special education. I accept responsibility for getting that to her on a, on a late date. So she has those questions. We will uh, talk about those questions next time, and I'll make sure that they. I'll attempt to make sure that they're posted on the website. So that were questions related to the special education audit. Okay, item number three: reports. Mr. Strait, please proceed with the SAAS applications audit report. Excuse Thanks me, Mr. McMillian. McMillian. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, I apologies. I believe I believe I've gotten Ms. Frempong joined. If she could um, say something. To make sure. Ms. Tiffany, please speak if you can hear us. I'll call her back, sir. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, Mr. Strait, please. All right, thank you, Mr. McMillian. I just want to confirm that everyone can see the report on their screens. I can. Okay, yes. yes cool. All right. Um, the, uh, the Office of Internal Audit um, recently completed its audit over Enterprise Solutions SaaS Applications, SAAS, and issued our final report on April 3rd. The objective of, of the audit was to ensure proper controls exist over the BCPS software review process for SAS, which is an acronym that stands for Software as a Service. Um, we selected a sample from the technology portfolio of available software products, no matter where in the review process the product was. So we truly did capture everything um, within the, the realm of that software review from beginning to end. We did not uh, uh, leave out any items. The, the audit was clean. Um, our, our test work disclosed no reportable issues with the BCPS software review process. Um, I would like to make clear, though, that we only tested the Department of Enterprise Solutions role in this process and formulated our testing against the department's uh, BCPS software review and implementation review SOP. So we only looked at IT's side of this, uh, this equation. Uh, we've reported three commendations that I would like to highlight. Um, one is the documentation. Uh, Enterprise Solutions keeps a vendor document library which contains supporting documents. And I'll move down to the commendations real quick. Uh, a vendor document library that contains the supporting documents of their reviews for each product. And uh, it was easy for our team to go into the library and uh, review the pertinent information. Additionally, the communication was excellent during this entire audit. Um, and uh, Ms. Uh, Tara McNulty, who was our liaison and point of contact for the audit, was uh, very helpful and prompt in responding to our inquiries. And then finally, the, the, the final com accommodation was um, just the, the existence of a, a very detailed SOP related to the software review. Um, it, it exists and uh, based on our testing of the sample that we selected, it is, uh, it is working properly. Um, finally, the, uh, the audit team would like to acknowledge Ms. Tara McNulty for her day-to-day -day interaction with our team uh, during the audit and Mr. Jim Corns for his overall guidance and insight at the beginning of the audit so that we knew we were going in the right direction with uh, with our with our testing uh, plan. Uh, Mr. McMillian, this concludes my uh, presentation and I would like to turn it over to Mr. Corns if he has any additional statements uh, related to the to the audit. Uh, Mr. Strait, I, I appreciate uh, the interactions we had with the uh, Office of Internal Audit. Um, as always, uh, it is uh, great to have you all uh, look at our processes for process improvement. Um, I have no additional comments for this uh, audit, though. Thank you. Mr. Jim, thank you. And I'd just like to acknowledge Ms. McNulty. I talked with Ms. McNulty. Uh, at Chesapeake High School back a bunch of years ago. So I'd like to thank her for her efforts to help you with this audit too. Thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions for Mr. Strait or Mr. Jim? I don't hear or see any questions. Let me check the chat real quick, but I think that's old. Okay. I don't see or hear any questions. We're gonna move on. Item number four, new business. Ms. Barr, please proceed with the FY24 Quarter 3 Audit Work Plan Update. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Good afternoon. Um, <clears throat> this afternoon, I'm going to summarize our FY24 Quarter 3 activity for planned and unplanned audit projects, and that would be from July 1, 2023 through March 31, 2024. Uh, as of March 31, we had 37 audit projects identified, but I'm only going to present the changes from quarter two to quarter three in summary. So in quarter three, we had eight projects that were not started yet, and this was down six from, from quarter two. Uh, those projects were uh, one in the Division of Fiscal Services, 
two in the Division of Curriculum and Instruction, two in the Division of Schools, and two in the Division of Human Resources, and one in the uh, Chief Operating Officer uh, Division. In quarter three, five are still deferred. This remained the same from quarter, quarter two. They are the uh, Title I and Title II project, the Office of Payroll project, Office of School Climate, extended suspensions and expulsions, Department of Employee Training and Development, which is the Safe Schools Online Compliance Management System and the Draw Strategic Plan Man Management. And the committee will recall that they did approve the superintendent's request to defer these projects. In quarter three, we had three projects work that were in the planning phase, which is an increase from uh, the second quarter by one project. That they are the separation and termination for the COBRA, the discrimination claims and ADA accommodations process, and the help desk and repair shop services. We had three projects that were in various stages of field work, which is a which was a decrease um, of two from quarter two, and they are the ELA digital resources, the science program and risk mitigation, and the online e-learning opportunities. And in quarter three, we had two that were in the reporting stage, which was a, an increase of one from the previous quarter. And that was the fifth grade health curriculum audit and the SAS applications audit, which you just heard Mr. Strait present this afternoon. And in um, quarter three, we had four reports and one memo that was issued. And that was a decrease of six from quarter two. We issued the report of related to the MBE program in January of 2024. We issued the school safety measure program report in February of 2024, as well as the bus contractor management report. In March, we issued the special ed dispute resolution report, and we did issue one memo in February 2024 related to the advanced academics facilitator. We also in uh, February of 2024 completed the unplanned project of the MSDE state aid liaison audit. And their audit report is supposed to be out the end of this month, sometime around April the 30th. Uh, as you know, board policy 8400 now requires us to provide quarterly summaries of significant audit issues and an update of corrective measures taken related to prior audit issues and recommendations to the board and to the superintendent. And the list is included at the end of the quarter three report. Um, at, at the end of quarter three, we had seven issues that were added, four issues that were closed, and 39 issues that were still in process of resolution. 30 are scheduled for follow up, for us to follow up and complete in uh, the fourth quarter of this year, and nine are scheduled for follow up in the next fiscal year, fiscal year 2025. And just as a reminder, the Q3 update report is in board docs and it's posted on our website. And that concludes my report on the FY23 update. And I don't know if the committee has any questions with respect to the document that was in board docs. Thank you, Ms. Barr. Any questions from the committee members? I don't see any. Ms. Barr, please. I know we've talked about this, but please refresh my memory and and share to the listening public. How do you pick your topics for these audits? You you mentioned several minutes ago so many in curriculum, so many in payroll, so many. But how those particular topics? How do you how do you narrow down or drill down and and get that topic? Mm -hmm. So what we do is uh, we've, we've done an entity-wide risk assessment, and now each year we're in the process of refining and updating that risk assessment. So based on the information received from the process owners, and then if we have any knowledge and information in our office, particularly related to prior audits or investigations, we may or may not adjust the overall risk rating from the, the process owner. and then we make a determination of how many high, medium, and low risk audits we're going to complete um, during the year. And then once we make that determination based on the risk assessment, uh, we present that information uh, to the superintendent 
for her review and her input, and then we present the uh, proposed plan to the audit committee for their review and input. And that's how we get to where, uh, in a nutshell, basically. But it, it's a very uh, complex process because there are there are different risk categories, and then there's different weights assigned to the different risks, and then there's a formula that calculates the risk. Uh, be happy to present it perhaps at a, at a future um, audit committee meeting if if the committee so desires. Okay, and it appears that maybe Miss Lichter has a question. She has her camera on. Uh -huh. Can you turn your mic on, please, Miss Lichter? Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. Million, for asking that question because I, I had it also. Um, but I think my next question you just kind of hinted at when you use the word risk. Um, like what, how do you define risk? But then you went on to say that there's multiple risk categories and it's a complex um, complex formula. So I'm, I would be interested in hearing because sometimes the, pre the reports don't feel like there's a fraud risk or a monetary waste risk. So, um, so that's kind of my question too. Right, because it's uh, it's uh, mission critical, it's complexity, it's prior audit results, it's um, you can help me, man. I have to chime in here if you, if sure. you don't mind. I'll yeah, the categories. You got three of them correct. And there's regulations, changes in people or systems, um, the complexity, I think you said, and then the control environment. Right. And then they're all, they're all weighted. And then there's a formula that, that kind of spits out uh, in our work paper uh, system teammate. And then that calculates the weighted risk. And then certain certain um, divisions, uh, well, some are higher risk than other than others. Ms. Lichter, does that answer your questions? I understand that it's very complex. I guess that's you know what I'm getting out of it. It's not just looking at departments and saying we're going to audit them or we're going to audit them. So um, so I get it. No, I have a better understanding. We don't do that. At, we don't right. do that at all. Again, uh, we. we gathered a lot of information from from the budget book from the process owners themselves we talk with the with the chiefs um executive directors again i mean it, it's it's a lot of information gathering and then once we gather the information it's put into the into the system and then it's calculated by the system for us as far as uh the percentages so i we'd be happy to to provide an overview, like I said, at a, at a future meeting, if the committee desires, it's not an issue. I think that's a great idea, but we can talk to the committee about it. Uh, okay. I had a, just to, while we're talking about this with the risk assessment. So what's the time frame? So you reach out to the different department heads and on a certain time frame and, and start the initial gather this information and in preparation for the next year's work plan. Correct. So we start probably um, end of November, December in our office, gathering the information together, getting it ready to send out to the process owners. And probably right after winter break is when we start gathering information and updating our risk assessment. And keep in mind, you know, um, sometimes uh, offices and departments change within the, in the divisions staff changes within the divisions we get new people within offices uh, that we have to speak with so it's a lot to keep keep up and keep going so we we probably start in our office like i said the end of november beginning of december and then start reaching out to the process owners in january and do i gather that there's a, a software that you um download this information in and it calculates contributes to the the risk assessment correct yes okay and i'm guessing that that's built specifically for a, an educational software for edu education for organization you know it's a, it's an audit software it's not specifically uh, developed for it, an educational agency, but it's developed for auditors to use. OK, great. Ms. Barr, thank you very much for and and let's talk about and we can talk to the committee about that, too, if we want to do a, a more of a deeper dive into that. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, any other 
committee members have any questions on this? This is board member uh, Armpong. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ms. Freepal. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So we have this new ERP system that's coming in and it's going to touch a lot of different uh, departments and offices within BCPF. Um, and so, you know, there's a, a plan for how it'll be rolled out for the different departments. So do we also, or have we considered or given thought to, um, at some point, are we going to, I guess, audit those systems and processes to make sure that things are being done the way that we would expect them to be done? Yes, the short answer is yes. Um, we're working with, um, right now, it's HR and payroll that, that the focus is on uh, those modules right now that they're to be implemented from what I understand they're on target to implement in March of 2025 and Mr. Hartlove I know you're here so you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong um, and so we've been working with Mr. Hartlove and Mr. McCall to determine when it makes sense to do that we don't want to do anything right now but we are working with um, both of those uh, chiefs to determine when it makes sense post implementation for our office to come in and, and do the audit. I don't know, Mr. Hartlove, do you have anything else to add? No, I think you you summar, sum, summarized it nicely. Right now we're on schedule, which is a good which is a, a good thing. And the target date or the date is uh, spring of 2025 for those modules. So um, and the, and the talk was, you know, the discussion was once we get up and running at some point, once we feel like we are fully implemented, then an audit would be um, would be a good thing to do to make sure because we, you know, the system is supposed to take care of some of the issues we've had. So I think, you know, finding out that it's doing that is something we certainly want to encourage. We just to make sure we're fully up and running and and have dealt with any implementation issues prior to that audit. Ms. Ms. Barr, this is, this is Mr. Corns. Uh, mm -hmm. DOIT is um, working um, with uh, HR and finance as well to uh, assist with this implementation. I only want to bring one small clarity to the timeline. Uh, March of 25 is our target date for the implementation of the HR system and payroll. And then um, we will start in the fall of 25 uh, with the implementation of finance, but it will extend past that March date as we do the implementation. So there is one ERP system, but because of the scale, it will actually track on two separate project timelines. So that's just a little bit of nuance to the the answer that yes, March of 25 is one of our go live dates. Yes, thank you for the clarification. OK, great. Any any additional questions from committee members? Um, this is board member Frimpong again. So just thank you for those answers. And that's great that you guys already have it then um, and are planning for it. And I guess, can we expect to receive? So if spring 2025 is rollout for HR and um, finance, so that's the second one, finance for, for the second department. Will we payroll. receive updates? Yeah. Payroll, thank you. That is a separate. So a HR and payroll. Can we expect just at, at that point to receive an update on the timing of when? I guess I just don't want to lose sight of that. So when can we expect to receive an update on when we will expect to be doing audits on those systems that have been implemented through ERP? Yeah, so my my prediction right now, it, if things go the way that they're going and the, the implementation, the switch and they go live March 2025, um, you, you have to give them a little bit of time to get things up and running. So my thought would be that it probably wouldn't be until fiscal beginning of fiscal 26 or probably the end of 2025 is, is when we, we would be looking at that to do some type of audit work at that time because you figure March, you're already going to be in almost the um, fourth quarter at that point in time. Fourth quarter of 2025. So it would even if we started something in 2025, it it would more than likely carry over into fiscal year 26. OK, thank you. You're welcome. OK, 
We're going to move on. Mr. Fletcher, please proceed with the FY24 quarter three investigations update. Thank you, Mr. McMillian, and I believe everyone should be able to see the report now. Yes, I do anyway. Excellent. OK. So uh, this is a report of our year to date investigative statistics as of the end of the third quarter 2024. And I will actually start here on table one this is where we typically start. Uh, and through the end of the third quarter, we received a total of 101 cases in through our hotline. And this table summarizes those cases and actually shows that 50 of the 101 cases have been kept uh, for investigation by the Office of Internal Audit. 34 were provided to BCPS management for their review and disposition. And then 17 were closed without investigation as the information provided was not within the purview of the hotline. Now, this table also shows that of the 50 cases kept by the Office of Internal Audit, 20 were misuse of property or resources, 12 were payroll fraud or overtime abuse, six were conflicts of interest, six were theft, and the remaining six were either falsification of records procurement or pre purchasing practice concerns, or information seeking, no allegations made. And so as we slide down into our next table, which is table two, we note that in addition to the 101 new cases that have been received so far this fiscal year, 32 cases remained open from the end of the previous fiscal year, which resulted in 133 open cases throughout this entire fiscal year. And so far in fiscal year 24, 111 of the 133 cases have been closed, resulting in 22 cases that are still open as of the end of the uh, third quarter. Now for the Office of Internal Audit Investigations, which are here in this first column, 71 have been open throughout the fiscal year and 49 have been closed, resulting in the 22 that are still open as of the end of the third quarter. And details for these cases are in table three down below. Now for management investigations, which are here in the second column, 41 have been open throughout the fiscal year and all 41 have been closed. Details for these cases are available down below on table four. And then lastly, the cases outside the purview of the hotline are here in this final column. 21 were open throughout the entire fiscal year and all 21 have also been closed. Details for those cases are available in table five down below as well. And as uh, we mentioned each time, these reports are available um, on board docs and, and should have already been provided to you as well. And Mr. McMillian, I turn it back over to you for any questions. Thank you. Committee members, any questions for Mr. Fletcher? Hearing none, we're going to move on to item number five. Thank you, Mr. Fletcher. Thank you. Now, item number five is something new to our agenda. It's general good and welfare. Uh, Ms. Howie, the lead BCPS lawyer, recommended that we use this titling on our agenda. General good and welfare. Now, I'm going to change my screen real quick. And we're going to talk about that briefly. OK. Now, what this is about is Chair Booker Dreyer asked us to dig deeper on our topics and our strategic dialogue with, uh, now I'm trying to pick and choose from an email that she sent what she wants us to do. We're to look at our committees and justify our committees. I'm going to, that's what I'm saying. We're going to justify our committees based upon, I don't see my picture up and I've had it. There it is. Through policy that was already been established through BCPS policy. And the great thing, now Ms. Barr and I talked about this extensively for 45 minutes. 
I didn't put anything in writing, but we're going to go back and do that. But I want to give the the viewers just some some a quick overview to to on what we're going to look at. Uh, committee chairs are responsible for planning and implementing agendas in collaboration with the committee and staff members. Staff members will provide technical assistance, guidance, and support for the meetings. Now, she gave, uh, Chair Booker Dwyer gave us uh, an example through the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee. Uh, Ms. Barr and I used this when we were planning our agenda, and we really did talk about it for at least 35 or 45 minutes. Uh, and the great thing is there's a number of different policies that pertain specifically to uh, the audit committee and the function of the audit committee, and it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to take, if I have the support of the committee members, I want to table this for this meeting, and I want to go back and construct uh you know, a presentation, or I don't know about a presentation, but I want to go back and construct answers to these questions and be able to po put it on the screen and show the public uh, exactly what we're talking about in regards to the audit committee. Can I have a motion to table this from someone? Motion, Ms. Lichter. Motion accepted. Or Okay, great. I'm not sure if we need a second. I'll second it. Okay, thanks, Mr. Young. Uh, Ms. Jamison, let's do a vote on tabling this. And if we get the votes we needed, then that will be a, a agenda category next meeting. Okay, Ms. Lichter? Yes. Ms. Frampong? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Four in favor, thank you. Okay, great. So we're going to table this. And I'll bring it back and I'll make sure that I have something in writing that we can put on the screen that we can look at. Okay, so I'm done with that screen. I'm going to jump back to the script. Okay, so that was general good and welfare, item number five. Item number six, announcements. The next meeting of the audit committee will be held on Monday, May 20th, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. And we're on a Monday next time and not a Tuesday because of some other conflict. And I don't remember what the conflict was at this point. Uh, committee members, any any other comments before we close out? OK, hearing Mr. none. Mr. McMillian, excuse me. Andrea yes. Bull. Yes, Ms. Barr. I thought because at our next meeting, we're going to present our work plan, would the committee like to hear an overview of the risk assessment prior to the presentation of the plan? Can we talk about that now? I know it's not sure. on the agenda, but it is it, just so that we can plan and have everything ready for the meeting. Because once this meeting ends, we start getting ready for the next meeting. I think it's a great idea. Committee members, other committee members. Um, this Ms. Lichter, I agree. I'd like to hear that before we look at the work plan. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Young, Mr. Freepong, Ms. Freepong. That's fine. Okay. I'm in agreement. Ms. Barr. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I can hear that. Ms. Freepong. I was just saying that I was in agreement. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ms. Barron, I don't know why you couldn't do the presentation and then answer any questions or whatever and then go into your work plan. Yes, that's what I'd like to do. That's okay. Like do. Yeah. And then we'll make sure that we, we get that category on that I mentioned too. Yes. Okay. If there's no other questions, I'd like to thank everybody for sticking with us and making it through to the end. Okay. Thank you and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. 2024 at 430. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Good evening. Have a good, good. evening.